जय वीर सिंगल हेयर ब्रह्मचर्या प्रतिष्ठायाम वीर लाभा द चेस्ट अक्वायर वाइटैलिटी दिस वन लाइन ऑफ संस्कृत टेक्स्ट व्हिच इंटर्ड माय लाइफ अराउंड 11 मंथ्स अगो दिस वन आइडिया had such a huge impact in such a short time trigger warnings we're going to be talking about sex we're going to be talking about masculinity we're going to be talking about male sexual physiology biology and related topics so you've been warned and ladies please hang around and join in the conversation it will be very interesting for me to know personally what your uh, your feedback about this topic is going to be and men obviously hang around i want to deep dive into why i think the ancient practice of brahmacharya or celibacy or sex energy transmutation as napoleon hill spoke in the 11th chapter of think and grow rich why i think this is an important topic to talk about and why i think it has a huge relevance to modern men today leave a comment contact me follow me on instagram dm me let's talk let's deep dive right into it. brahmacharya pratishtayam viralabha the chaste acquire vitality or upon the practice of celibacy one acquires attains power why do i think brahmacharya is relevant why do i think it's a powerful practice for today's men to embrace especially i'm talking directly to sinhalese men this idea of brahmacharya appears in the third shila of the panchashila in the buddhist practice kame sumithya chara vermani sikha padam samadhyami which is a direct reference to this practice which obviously predates the the canonized buddhist shila text right so let's go all the way back how about that so here we go I've written some notes so I'm just going to I'm just going to dive in here and and talk to the camera and just switch back and forth right so stay with me so topics brahmacharya first thing to know about brahmacharya it is difficult this practice of brahmacharya is also known in the modern vernacular as semen retention retaining virya by not releasing male vital essence which is expressed as semen by a certain regime of physical mental and spiritual techniques it is possible and this is me saying this it is possible to channel this creative energy up from downstairs channel its desirous playful aggressive fiery quality to create a composition a poem an architectural concept a business an e-commerce website a choreography sculpt your body run a marathon learn a new skill be your best this is the kind of mindset this practice promotes so what does brahmacharya means brahmacharya is actually two sanskrit words brahma which means universal consciousness is what god is called in sanskrit charya which means occupation with engaging proceeding behavior conduct to follow moving in go after pursue brahmacharya essentially in sanskrit means engage in a discipline or a mode of behavior that is in line with the universal consciousness oldest known sanskrit text which is the rigveda the oldest of the four vedas mention this practice in the 10th mandala right it mentions the knowledge seekers or mystics with long hair and saffron colored robes engaged in the affairs of mananath or mind or meditation this is the oldest sanskrit text in the world talking about mystics engaged in brahmacharya 
Then there is Atharva Veda, which is said to have completed by 1000 BC. Brahmacharya is what leads to a person's second birth. Who were some of the leading spokespeople from living memory from our time that spoke about this? Swami Sivananda, one of the most revered Hindu mystics from our time. He attests that a man is no man without the practice of brahmacharya or the preservation of virya energy. Swami Brahmananda, again another revered Hindu sage from relatively modern times, for the grasp of full development and vitality of the body, brain and mind, Brahmacharya is essential. Swami Ramakrishna says, When a man succeeds in the conservation of his sexual energy, his intellect reflects the image of Brahman. The man who carries this image of Brahman in his heart is able to accomplish everything. He will succeed wonderfully in whatever action he engages himself in. I am of Sri Lankan descent. I am Sinhalese. And let me just speak directly to Sinhalese men why I think we should embrace Brahmacharya as a nation. Let's just think about that one for a moment while I sip on some coffee. I think the Sinhalese nation should really embrace this very vigorous, physical, mentally and spiritually demanding practice because it has such transformative powers. Gautam Siddhartha was an astute practitioner of Brahmacharya. The Panchashila, the five basic disciplines, not for the monks, but for everyone. This mentions the practice of Brahmacharya. And it's almost assumed as, as common knowledge. And let's all remember, of course, Gautam Siddhartha's audience were familiar with the Vedas, the Puranas, Upanishads, all of the Vedic knowledge. They were definitely well aware of Brahmacharya. Outside of India, in China, Taoism, in Chinese culture, refers to vital energy as Jing and the practice of cultivation and transmuting of vital energy is considered to be a foundational practice to attain maximum physical, mental and spiritual development. Jing specifically sexual vital energy along with Qi and Shen are known as Sun Bao or the three treasures. This is Taoism from China. Greek philosophers like Plato, Pythagoras, Socrates have spoken of the importance of this practice. So did the Christian Gnostics, Sufi mystics, anyone and everyone who ventured into the mind, to the inner world, to, to the betterment of society, to, to greatness, to pursuing excellence. Many of these greats spoke about this particular practice. And I think we ought to pay attention and I think we ought to delve into it and I think we ought to at least start talking about this. Leonardo da Vinci, René Descartes, the French philosopher, the mathematician, Sir Isaac Newton, Nikola Tesla, Florence Nightingale, Ludwig van Beethoven, Jane Austen, Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson, Steve Jobs, 50 Cent, all of these men and women have embraced this practice at least one period of their life. There is something that makes sense about semen retention. There is something about Brahmacharya. Which brings me to my own experience. Again, towards the end of 2019, having come through a set of, let's say, trying circumstances, personal and professional, career-wise. Towards the end of 2019, I started sensing this change. I started listening to 
things like positive affirmations. I started researching successful people. I started looking and reading into people like Napoleon Hill, rich dad, poor dad. I wanted to, I wanted to make a positive change. There was this resonant theme towards the spring of 2019. For the first time in many years, I started waking up at 5.30. I started waking up before the sunrise. And I started waking up early and early. And I started moving and getting into the physical body straight away. And I started running. I started going into the gym. I started or I restarted going back into martial arts. And I started meditating, yoga. This whole cluster of habits started forming around me. Uh, cold showers. This is one practice I adhere to every single day, twice a day, cold showers. This is an entire different episode, so I'm not going to even go into that, right? So, cold showers, remember that, it's a hyperlink. A year after stumbling onto the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali and the practice of Brahmacharya, yoga and meditation, martial arts and physical exercise, healthy eating. Just the other day, I switched on to ketogenic diet. I want to experience that. I want to go and, and have a go at it. Uh, I did a 72-hour fast the other day and cutting out completely carbs and sugar and getting into black coffee and, and butter and, and be weird. And I, I started doing these kind of things. I started getting... I started re-establishing a connection, like a genuine connection to my body and my mind. Ever since I, I stumbled on Brahmacharya practice. So I think, at least for, for myself, for personal benefits have been incredible and, and visible. Let me just read out some of the stuff that I noticed since I started practicing Brahmacharya, since I started becoming conscious of the male vital energy and, and how to transmute sexual energy into creativity, into your business, into your craft, into your spiritual discipline, into your body, and how to turn that into a source of power and what my experience have been. Right, let's get into it. Visible benefits and how quickly they came about. Within weeks, physical energy, which can be, which has to be in some cases, channeled directly into a workout, into a run, into a walk. This is physical nature to this practice. Increased physical and mental endurance, clarity, focus, and this sense of primal hunger to chase and achieve and push yourself and compete against yourself, not, not, any, not, against, not against anyone else. Forget anyone else. And that's another thing that, that I've started noticing. You begin to care less and less about what other people think. These other people are mostly in your mind anyway. And you begin to realize that this is, this is simply a scenario that you're creating in your mind. What other people think. And you begin to just drop it and, and just get rid of it. Clarity, focus and this really primal sense of hunger. Right? Alert posture and quick, purposeful step. There's a sense of confidence. Let's dance or move out of the way kind of energy, kind of attitude. And there is this ultra high definition quality to everything that, that you begin to see. Your nature comes alive and you develop this appreciation for being alive and being in this place. And there's a sense that you can begin to forgive people for if people have wronged you or you can begin to accommodate, you can begin to tolerate and you become more compassionate when you embrace this kind of voluntary hardship like the practice of brahmacharya, like cold showers, like intermittent fasting. The list keeps going. Observing more detail in nature. Engaged and being fully present in conversations. Appearance and your voice changes. And people notice. All right. Animals notice. I go to the park every single day almost, either to run or to train or to film. 
I'm always there and these dogs, some of the mean looking, vicious looking, big dogs, they just come straight to you, kind of scope you out a little bit and they just walk right past you or just say hello to you and just kind of get to know you. Animals notice this. Dogs are obviously very, very smart creatures. So they will know when there is some kind of a primal energy that's kind of coursing through a human's body, they will know it the same way that they know if a person's less than fully healthy. Practicing brahmacharya makes you a more action-oriented, proactive, excited, optimistic person who goes about the day like, let's have a go kind of attitude. And you move out of your, your victim mindset. And personally, for me, this is, this is myself. I'm talking about my own experience. I stopped thinking like this pathetic little character in, in, a, in a horrible novel someone else wrote for you. Uh, and, and I started realizing that I'm a writer. I can actually write this as I go. The moment you begin to realize this, which to me came to came to me as as a direct result of the combination of practices I embraced within the last 11 months brahmacharya semen retention channeling your sexual energy from downstairs up through the spine into your mind into your communication energy center into your heart wherever that is needed you retain that power in ayurveda it says it takes 40 drops of blood to produce one drop of semen. In the Chinese tradition, it's again something like 10 drops of blood to one drop of semen. The numbers vary obviously from culture to culture, how they came about this diagnosis, I don't know. But the idea is there in both sides of the Himalayas, in the Indian tradition and in the Chinese tradition as well. The idea of Cultivating, retaining virya or jing or male sexual energy and channeling it through yogic breathing techniques, kriya yoga, through viparsana, through anapanasati, qigong in the uh, Taoist tradition. Whatever the technique that you are aware of or you know, by channeling this energy, you achieve a kind of a kind of a sacred alchemy just channeling this primal creative energy into more imaginative ideas like a like a musical composition like a painting a poem a book a business a corporation a novel idea an equation an insight this virya energy this creative energy of the universe when channeled it through practice of brahmacharya becomes extremely powerful and I think it's absolutely important for men to talk about this and embrace this at least try this try this for 30 days first of all see how difficult this is we live in a, a society that's inundated with dopamine hits all day long how many times do we pick up our smartphones? How many screens surround us all the time? Right? Pornography on high speed internet, ease of access to narcotics, to party drugs. Add on top of that video gaming, bad food, lack of exercise. Add all of these together, and that becomes a habit cluster that we talked about. And that makes people less than who they are it makes less men I can look back in my life and I was like dude you are 40% and that's moving into the shadow side of the, the brahmacharya practice and that's the main concern the moment you realize the moment you begin the moment you give 7 days of semen retention there are these insights that come to you and some of them can be quite alarming some of them can be quite disheartening. Some of them can be scary. And I want to just read a little bit more into that. You begin to notice, especially around dusk, things like aggression, impatience, 
and and your mind kind of dips and you begin to feel a little moody around this time as well right so this is something that is commonly reported amongst people who practice brahmacharya and i think i have the solution simply by looking into the ancient traditions the practice of aarti or lighting an oil lamp burning incense after sunset practicing music bringing music into the evening raga times ancient traditions knew about this practice obviously as practitioners for thousands of years they knew about the shadow side as well and i think that's why many of the ancient traditions have an evening ritual i remember in in kendi in my home town in sri lanka kendi is like the mecca the jerusalem for the theravada the buddhist world the temple of the tooth relic of the buddha is in my home town and i remember around dusk after sunset the drums would start playing in the temple right the incense would start and people would bring flowers lotus flowers jasmine flowers all of these tropical flowers they would just bring to the temple light incense and these temple drums and the trumpets start playing in the muslim mosques uh, the call for prayer the azan is in the air and the hindu temple the puja time begins around this time as well so all of these different religious cultures preserve this memory of having to have a certain evening ritual that would elevate the senses that would elevate the mind to combat this kind of mind dip that happens around dusk and i think again there is merit in investigating into shamanic religious and spiritual traditions whether it's the christian islamic judaic or taoist or vedic buddhist whichever the tradition that you feel connected with i reckon you can go straight into it with no label of whatsoever just go into this idea of just arresting your mind arresting your mammal brain and the the dopamine reward system and begin to channel your creative energy into things like your business things like your craft choreographies dance and painting and music and novels poems you know human things <laughs> this i believe is what friedrich nietzsche mentioned in thus spake zarathustra every human being has this drive this sense of achievement this sense of betterment it's almost as nietzsche describes human being is like a bridge between two things and i think he understood the power of brahmacharya as a scholar of both taoist and vedic philosophy friedrich nietzsche was absolutely familiar with the idea of transmutation alchemy of sexual energy of primal creative sexual energy into imagination into voice into intellect into commerce into athletics into combat into martial arts all of these positive human experiences and expressions and he understood that a year on i built into this things like early morning rise moving your physical body and getting to exercise the first thing in the morning yoga martial arts just work out eating healthy eating more high vibrational foods like plants herbs and reducing carbohydrates and eliminating processed foods and looking after yourself as best as you know and best as you can what i find is again brahmacharya by far is the most difficult physically 
and mentally demanding mind boggling challenging practice of ever taken on in my life hands down no doubt about it but the effects of that the results that i continue to get from weaving this ancient practice into my day-to-day life has been absolutely rewarding and absolutely worth the the effort the struggle in singhalese the word for effort is virya So that's an important point to remember as well. So what I found is willpower is the first step and willpower is not going to be enough. But it is the first set of muscles you work on when you embrace this particular practice. How to cultivate this? It's a complex topic, it's a complex practice, complex practice and I'm kind of still working on my own ritual. at the moment so which is why i wanted to do this episode this way and and reach out to men and challenge the men watching especially if you're singhalese i want to challenge you to embrace the path of brahmacharya simple and as i say to the small number of brothers that i've shared this particular practice with and and studying together with the results are very very similar it's very interesting it's super interesting to me to hear it from other men what their experience have been the moment they begin to arrest our primal brain's reward system the moment we eliminate things like addiction to social media to drug abuse to pornography to other forms of super normal stimulus that surrounds us from a very young age from the moment we get access to internet on our smartphones there's an entire generation of men just growing up with this just being 40% this practice made the difference uh during the lockdown i started a business i got into business with two business partners and exploring few other opportunities some of you know that i was in sri lanka earlier this year and this is what i did i tapped into this energy and i just went around places picked up the phone and talked to people and shook hands with people and looked people in the eye and say i want to do this can you help me take me to that person take me here take me there i was getting things done and i was not tired and i slept really well at night woke up in the morning cold shower yoga and and got into the body and boom away i go and get things done talking to people and and researching and understanding opportunities and i have not done that before i used to be quite shy and awkward back in high school but within a year i just turned things around and i just completely opposite extrovert i started playing music i started getting into football i started getting into the social groups that i observed to be doing well and all of that so i i made i turned things around so i never had a problem with social anxiety or talking to people or 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 interacting with a large variety of people on on various topics i didn't have that but i noticed a difference i wasn't that nice in conversation that was that was one of the first things i noticed i wasn't nice i wasn't i wasn't just backing out uh where there was conflict i would just welcome it and and just just bring it on kind of kind of attitude this thing i never had and i used to be always kind of laid back and just go with the flow yeah if you're happy with it i'm happy you know if you're good with it i'm i'm all right you know that kind of that kind of a deal right but not since last spring uh i would be a little bit more direct i would be a little bit more to the point and again coming back to the shadow aspects of brahmacharya these are the cues that i have to watch out you have to watch your anger you have to watch your aggression you have to watch your 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 sense of impatience you have to watch your sense of i don't know this is intensity in your demeanor in your speech just be mindful that this exists as well and 
think of it as a positive thing. Take it as a positive thing because for the first time you're discovering and tapping into this primal energy that's within you. And just feel it out. Just meditate. Breathe. This is why I can't stress enough the practice of meditation, deep breathing. Get into one form of the other type of meditation, the basic breathing mindfulness uh, practice or Vipassana technique of the Buddhists or Kriya Yoga technique, yoga, Ashtanga, Hatha Yoga, Hot Yoga, whatever type of yoga that works for you, embrace it. Consider martial arts. Get into gardening. Write a book. Research e-commerce. Find out about artificial intelligence and deep learning. Channel your time into learning a new musical instrument. Learn to produce videos. Serve some person. Volunteer your time. Plant trees. Whatever there is you are passionate about, pursue it. Pursue it. Tap into this primal energy. Embrace the hunter archetype. Embrace the warrior archetype. And pursue it and become successful. Brahmacharya Pratishtham Virilabha. That's why I think the practice of Brahmacharya is relevant and it's important and it generates some powerful results. It's been Island Empire. My name is Javier Singhal. Thank you for watching. Thank you.